harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Was that time just ticking away? Yeah, it felt like it. It felt like, you know, when you get a five, four, three, it feels like there should be a blast off. Well, imagine if you had like a condition in your life yeah. that kept giving you a countdown from 10, just yeah. for no reason, You like some sort of, you know, brain anomaly that kept counting down from 10. You'd be yeah. so nervous, you know, you spend your entire life yeah. just on tender hooks, like when that five happened just then. I was terrified for a moment. It's like, the, um, remember you guys did that in Lost? You just had a thing ticking down for like yeah, a whole do you season. Remember? I can't remember how far off the ticker was to you. Was it days or months or? What, the tick down? No, it was only like, it was a four, four, 45 minutes, wasn't it? Was it? Oh, I think it was a 45 minute tick show. down. And then if you put the numbers in, it resets it. Yeah, but you don't know what for. Right. Like you were saying, just like if you had a tick down in your life and you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know if your head's going to explode or like the picture's going to fall off the wall or, yeah. you know, I don't um, know. You go, to a, what, you go to another universe, a, a, a parallel one. And and do you remember what it actually was for in the end? Like did it open a bunch of doors that we couldn't get into or did it like, did we all get like a cuddly toy or something when the clock? Lost, Lost never actually answered all my questions, if I'm honest. Though. Not sure how many questions it answered in any way, to be fair. There was, there, I think as I remember it, it, it was a, a cog system where, where what? The, what? The, island would, the island would move slightly at, using a cog system. A cog, so yeah, it would, yeah. So say, say for instance, the island was in a Rolex watch. Then Wait, but was it? Was it? it? Was it? No, no. Oh, okay. If okay. it told me, if it told me that, I'd have, I'd have liked that, Dom. Yeah. I'd have liked that, but it yeah. didn't tell me that. Okay. But all the so, cogs moved at one point. Right, and when but just that's to as try much. and get some clarification, when the cogs moved, did. Did that movement like pick up polar bears and then monsters and then they got trapped because they were on like a the polar bears on a piece of ice and as the cog moves yeah. it, it goes over the piece of ice and picks up the polar bear and then it wants to get back on its ice but it now it's on the cog and so I, no Dom you're getting somewhere yeah so the cog system is actually has went off a few times before you guys arrived. Is that what you're right. saying? Yeah. And so that's how the polar bear and maybe the trees are all shaking because it's on a dodgy call. Right, right. right. And, then, and then there was a, there was a monster made of smoke. Wasn't too sure what that was about. And then at one point there was a massive statue that only had four toes. I wonder if maybe one of the, one of the cogs just shaved off one of the toes. So, it could easily be done. There's a lot of accidents in, in machinery like that. That's true. Didn't you know someone who severed their arms in a paper cutting machine? So here's the thing, Dom. I don't Mom. know if you know this, but I used to be a bookbinder. I've heard this before, before I was an actor. Yeah. I used to make books. And uh, I worked in the print finishing department of right. a, a printer's. Where the Just can I interject? Are. Yeah. Print finishing. So that's someone prints something, but it's not that great, and then you finish it off. Is that what? No, no. Right. So the printed page, whatever it is, yeah. comes to us as a printed page, but that's it. So if it's a book, it will maybe have page 1, 19, 28, 63, 112. Hang on. No, you're okay for the, you're okay for the time being. Right. Okay. So, yeah. um, so depending on how that page gets folded, it then makes part of the book. So, at, in the print finishing, you fold that paper, not manually. A machine does it. Yeah. Then maybe you're on the machine that puts all the pages together. Then you're on the machine that 
cuts all the edges off, then you're right. on the machine that sticks the cover on. There's a lot that goes into making a book, Tom. Yeah, yeah. But to get back to your point about yeah. did I know anybody get injured, if yeah. you go to Madame Tussauds in London, now there is a whole sec. I think now, yeah. certainly the last time I went, certainly the last time I went, there's a whole department on injuries and disfigurements from the print finishing department of printers. Oh. oh. Because and of all the things that can happen to you. Right. And that, does that, that has something to do with cogs. Is that what you're saying? And a roundabout way. So the, pr- the you, island, the island of Lost was a print finishing department. Right. And a big printers that we call the world. It's, it's fun doing the podcast with you, but I feel like I tend to follow it a lot more when we're in person. When we're doing it via computer <laughs> terminals, I get, I get confused, you know, it's confusing. This, this is the first time we've done this, Dom, and it's yeah. because you've, you've went off, haven't you? You went off for a little bit. You went travelling. Went travelling. You're not went- in Los Angeles. No, I'm working, but um, I'm working in Europe, in Ireland. As they, as they say in the United States, Ireland. They put a little R in there. Ireland. Probably we, because Irish people have an R. I don't know. But I love Ireland. It's beautiful. I don't think we're allowed to say what you're doing there. Well, But we can think, say um, that you're flexing your uh, acting muscle. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've already, it's already um, gone out what I'm, why I'm in Ireland in terms of like, you know, if, if, if anyone reads about what, what projects are being made, it did go out on deadline. I'm making a show called Moonhaven, um, which is based on the moon. Um, so I think, well, it's a fictional moon. It's not the moon that we know because obviously uh, there's a lot of stuff with gravity and, uh, the atmosphere uh, that are very different from how we would navigate around on the moon. Um, but they're using some of these like bleaker, more isolated, more unspoiled natural areas to represent a type of moon. You know, I like that, Tom, because you know yeah. that if you had to ask me, it'd be my favourite genre. Moon because films you based normally in pick- Ireland. I, no, I normally, you know, I, I normally ignore your work because it's not a genre that I'd be watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I watch everything you do, of course. But um, but I'm very excited about this one. You're on the moon. I'm on the moon. Um, I think excited. the films... You've the grown films a moustache on the moon. Well, yeah, but I also think my... Because of the way that my beard is graying, it now starts to look like I have more of a moustache because this is now becoming obsolete. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So that exactly that happens to me. For people who are just listening, uh, Dom has got an amazing what looks like a moustache that goes all the way around from his nose up to his sideburns. But it's only because there's a bit of grey right here on his chin that oh, makes it almost chin. invisible, which and is exactly how I look in my pass- passport. Um, I've got that same look. It oh, looks really? as if I've got a huge moustache, yeah. I would like to shave my face, but unfortunately for this project, I can't. But I did think it was really interesting that the project that I did before this, pre-COVID, mm. uh, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago now in Borneo, I had to grow essentially an old handlebar moustache with a beard, and now it's become my real life. So what's that about? Life imitates that, you know what I mean? Also, we should point out it, it's way easier for people watching the show than it is for people listening to the show, but you and I got the same memo and are wearing the same clothing today. Tom, and I have to say, for people who are not watching the show, you should be because we are wearing some of the greatest clothing available to humanity. Um, I am wearing the most comfortable hoodie and a, and a hat that will not only uh, defend your eyes from the sun, 
mm. but will also show other human beings how fashionable and, and pretty you are. Yeah. It also in California shields your head from uh, any it, any acid rain. Exactly. But we are wearing official the Friendship Onion merch. Now it's not it's taken us quite a while to get this. People have been asking. They say, I'd love to clothe myself in some friendship onion. So we listen. Look at Dom, you look fantastic, Dom. Look at that onion just placed there on your chest. I have an onion. It's well, I have the words of the friendship onion here on my forehead. Nice. Look at that stitching. Oh, the quality. My goodness. It was hand stitched, Dom, by grandmothers in Ireland. And it also fits perfectly on your dog's head because you sent me a photo of that earlier on in the week. Didn't he look fantastic? My dog was just around there. I'm sure he'll show up later in the episode. He's an absolute cracker and he looks fantastic. And it's now, not only we'll... hoodies, Dom. Yeah, go on. There's T-shirts. Hang on. I was going to wear this one. I was going to wear this, Dom, but it's a lady's, you see, and it wouldn't fit over my massive chest. Yeah, your big man Look at chest. the onion. Oh, I like that detail. So that's Do onion like on that. the front, friendship onion on the back. Is that right? There's, there's never too much onions, Dom. Look at that. It's lovely, lovely that, isn't it? Going to get cool. some of that. Anyway, I'm done pitching that for a minute, so I'm going to remove my sweater because I'm quite hot. Then that's a, good, Do you a mind? great idea. No, please, be my guest. Um, maybe you can get your okay. wonderful wife to put on that lady's T-shirt and model it for us one day. Yeah, I will. I'll ask her. I don't know if she'll do it, but she might do it. I don't know. I yes. can always ask her. Right, yeah. you keep everybody entertained while I remove my hat and sweater. Right, while you do that, I'll tell everyone out there, if they're interested, where they can get hold of wonderful friendship onion clobber that you can put in your stockings for Christmas, you can get it from friendshiponionpodcast.com. We have chosen not to include a V at the start of that uh, web page. It's just friendshiponion.podcast.com. Someone, some cheeky chappy or chapette took the V and made it their own. So drop the T-H-E. It's just the shortcut. It's friendshiponionpodcast.com. Friendshiponionpodcast.com. We don't need the thing. May I, Dom, may I ask, maybe the person who stole the Friendship Onion podcast, uh, maybe they're listening to the Friendship Onion podcast, and we would like to offer you no cash for that. We will no. certainly not be giving you cash, but we will give you a T-shirt, a sweater, and a hat, do you think, Dom? I think a hat. Is that too much? And okay. no, that's fine. It's a negotiation. We're we're in a negotiation. I'm, I think I'm going to raise yeah. the stakes on the negotiation. A t-shirt, a hoodie, right? A hat, right? And if the person is interested, we'll have them on as a guest on the show to ask them about why they chose that friendship on your podcast uh, address. I'd like to ask them. That's why. right. So, so if you are the person who took. The Friendship Onion podcast as, uh, uh, what do you call that? A name. What is that A called? domain. A domain. A name. domain, yes. If you took the domain, the Friendship Onion podcast, then please get in touch. You'll get a T-shirt, a hat, a sweater, and if you want, you can appear on the show and explain to us why you go around taking names of, of shows. I, I think it would be an interesting conversation. I wonder I what else they've got. I think it will too. Yeah, I mean, maybe some, some people I mean, that'd be a good. Living. That would be a good living. You could just sit all day and say, "What's it? What, what shows are coming out?" And then just get ones that are kind of maybe about to run out. Really good ones like Dracula dot com. Bet you could yeah. sell that for a lot. Well, I think I, like I might not be right here, but I thought that's why twentieth century Fox changed their name to Fox Searchlight is because somebody bought. 21st century fox and they refuse to pay for it i think but you've got to pay for it because that's the whole idea otherwise you've just got it and what are you going to do with it 
Do you remember when we did... Like what, the uh, guy who's what, got the Friendship Onion podcast, what's he going to do on that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but but if maybe he he'll tell us podcast, when he comes on. Yeah, he can he can make a name for himself if he comes on our podcast, or she, and comes on our podcast and explains himself. But do you remember when we first got to... Well, not first got to New Zealand, but very, very early in our New Zealand um, rehearsal process, I believe it was Mark Ordesky, or it might have been Ian McKellen, but I'm not sure how I'm confusing those two. But one of the two of them said to us, you should buy your name as a domain. You should buy yeah. billyboyd.com. You should buy dominicmonahan.com. Yeah. And I didn't really bother. And someone definitely does have dominicmonahan.com. Yeah, somebody took Billy Boyd as well, because I did have a website for a while, and it was billyboyd.net, because that's all I could get. Right, I think I did the same. Um, How's the weather in, in Dublin, Tom? Do you know, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, I mean, we're, it's the 1st of October today, and we have had probably one day of slightly showery, wet weather. And apart from that, it's been crisp and cold and sunny and beautiful. Um, so have you bothered? Uh, have you bothered buying an umbrella? I would. I would ask you. Uh, uh, you put an extra syllable in there, an umbrella. Yeah, is that not <laughs> umbrella? That's right, <laughs> an isn't um, it? An umbrella. Uh, would you just uh, go I, umbrella? Yeah, I just go umbrella. Umbrella. Isn't it spelt with an e in there though? Umbrella. I don't think it's umbrella. I think it's umbrella. I think it's umbrella. Okay. Agree to disagree. <laughs> let's let's ask John. Is John yeah. on this um, special? Um, is it spelled not only in America but also in the UK? John, is it spelled umbrella or umbarella? I, I honestly have never even heard of the second option. It's always been <laughs> really. Oh no, really? But you're saying somewhere in the world they say umbrella, like well, yeah. really umba. umbrella. Uh, I think it's U M B R umbrella. umbrella. U M B B and then put an A after the B, uh, like the opposite from the alphabet. Umbrella. umbrella. I see. Yeah, I've never heard that in my life. It's just like how you say tuna, 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 yeah. tuna or vitamins. I noticed you got, you all say vitamins. We say yeah. vitamins. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Are like, you are um, you still googling for umbrella, John? I'm <laughs> don't get on vitamins now. I think it's just umbrella. Well, so now now you say that, Bills, because I'm very close to my front door. I always have a pocket sized umbrella by my front door because we're in Ireland. An extender. Ireland. Yeah, it's a good in here. I'll show you. It's a good in. I shall return. He's off now. An umbrella's always good in the rain. Oh, well, here you go. That's about as Let's small a as a pocket umbrella gets, with it still being a decent umbrella. Don't do that above your head. Don't don't open that above your head, Tom. Oh, God, you've opened it above your head indoors. That's unlucky, what? that. Is it? I thought that was walking under yeah. ladders. No, but putting an umbrella up indoors over your head. John, very quickly Google how you get rid of the bad the bad luck for that, would you please? <laughs> You probably have to turn around three times, spit, and, and say Queen Victoria or something. I'll, I'll do that anytime you want. That's it. We're really putting John to work today. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's been a while. Uh, anyway, I mean, we uh, don't even know where he is. It could be blah, blah, blah. Um, since I've been away, you and I haven't really played that much League of Legends, have you? Have we? So this. League of Legends update is going to be very, uh, very different. You've been playing with new pals. You've got new friends, Bills. Don, I've got lots of new um, League of Legends friends because you're in a different time just now. I mean, you're back and forward. We know that. And I'll see you in the studio. But yeah. at the moment, yeah. while we're apart, I can't get the times worked out where we can get on, on the rift together. So yeah. I have started playing with some other people, and one of them said to me, you know what? You should play Nami. He's a, a support in the bottom. And Dom, I love it. 
She's got, she's like a, what do you call that? A, a lady that's half fish, half lady under mermaid. the ocean. Remember they made a movie? Mermaid. A mermaid. And she's got a tidal wave, Dom. So when everybody's in a big fight, ah, yeah, I just go like this, ah, and I fire a tidal wave and everybody flies up in the air and then all my team can kill them while they're just up in the air. Hey, Dom, you know one thing I love about fall as the weather gets a little cooler, oh, yeah. getting out the back, lighting a nice fire, and having your friends around, nice bottle of wine, maybe singing some songs, and I tell oh, you yeah. who makes a great fire pit, Solo Stove. You know that, because you've been round mine, having a great time round that fire. They do make a fantastic Solo Stove, and if you want, I can tell you why they make a fantastic Solo Stove. It's made with stainless steel, and has a 360-degree airflow system that's patented that maximizes efficiency whilst minimizing smoke. And they're also perfectly portable. You can move them around your garden to different spots and enjoy a, a different kind of vibe with your solo stove. It's absolutely true, Dom. I love mine. I really do. And I got a new thing. I got the lid for it. So when it's not a stove, I use it as a table now, Dom. It's oh, great. So get the perfect fire pit for those fall nights and make your backyard a destination with a spectacular fire pit from Solo Stove. Shop the fall event now and get an extra $10 off when you use promo code ONION at checkout. They're so confident you'll love it, they offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Go to solostove.com and remember you get $10 off when you use the promo code Onion. Enjoy. Hey, friends. Sometimes when Billy and I are collaborating on an idea, we use Miro. Miro is a collaborative whiteboarding online platform created to help people visualize, discuss, and share their work. That's right, Dom. You can write on it, draw, use videos, sticky notes, diagrams, even audio to conceptualize your vision. A lot of people are finding it difficult just now outside of the traditional office. Well, Miro really helps to collaborate online. Miro is creating a revolution in how we create and collaborate. So join the over 20 million users today. You can sign up and use Miro today for free. Go to Miro, that's M-I-R-O dot com slash onion to start your free account. Sign up today and take advantage of three free whiteboards with this exclusive offer. Go to Miro, M-I-R-O dot com slash onion and start using Miro today. There's no reason to delay. What does it do to the Allied team? Do they fly up in the air as well? My team, no, they're fine. They just ride through it. Lovely. And it, she's got a brilliant heel, so she can heal my team as well, really good, or herself. Nice. She's got a bubble. She can throw a bubble at somebody, and if the bubble goes in them, it lifts them up in the, up in the air as well. And Brilliant. say I was playing with you, I can put three bubbles on you, and your next three hits at anyone will slow them down and give them more damage as well. Oh, nice. I, I was so much there. I made myself thirsty, Tom. I'll just have a no, drink have a little, out of my new a water drink. bottle. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, the quality. Right. Look at that. Case I tell you what, Tom, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, in case you're only listening, listening, Billy is putting up a wonderful drinking vessel available at friendshiponionpodcast.com. Not the Friendship Onion Podcast. No, Friendship Onion Podcast.com. And I tell you what, Tom, water has never tasted so good. And it, it, look, Tom, it comes with a carabiner. That's free, oh, that. That we comes with it. Amazing. Incredible. You can stick that on your bag. You can stick it on the end of your umbrella. You can put that wherever you want, and that will just hang there for whenever you feel like you might be dehydrated or just need a little pick-me-up. Yeah, that's wonderful. That, Another that's thing beautiful. you can do, Tom, when you're on set, if you're feeling a bit under pressure one day, you can fill that up with vodka, sip away, no one will ever know, Tom. Yeah, great. That's a, that's a great little tip. I love that. Um just going back to League of Legends for a second. League of Legends. Does Nami have a trident? A trident, yes, she does. 
That's where the three bubbles come from. I suppose, and she'll she'll point that at people. But to be honest, you know that what's your normal hit called? What's that called again? But you like your basic. So it's attack, not your cue. Your, your basic attack. Your basic attack is yeah. she doesn't do much damage with that. To be honest. Okay. All right. But well, I I really like her. I, I of think course she's brilliant. You do. And Dom. Dom, you'll be what? very proud of me here. I got my first S plus. Yeah, I love that. That's brilliant. I can't wait to see. I it. got an S minus, and then the next day I get an S plus. Anyone who doesn't play League of Legends, that's the best score that you can get. And yeah. I had, I'd never got anything past a C for about three wow. months, and all of a sudden, because of Nami, I'm on an S plus done. Very proud of you, Bill. Um, and you're right, Thanks, it has been tough with time zones because basically when I'm kind of shutting it down at the end of the night and just trying to lower my stimulus is when you're waking up in the morning and vice versa. So we've struggled. But maybe after this podcast, maybe we can fit in a quick game. You never know. Maybe we could um, text Elijah. In fact, why don't I text Elijah right now and okay. say we are going on to play League of Legends and see if I get anything back before the end of the show? Okay, we can do so a little So what are you live... thinking about Elijah on. coming on to League of Legends as a fruit? Where do you see it now, Tom? Honestly, I've, I've given up, which is a terrible thing to admit, but it's, <laughs> it's true. You can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it play League of Legends. I asked, and Elijah said yes, and then he did the tutorial, and then he got to level three. That was the last time I saw him. So he's not even opened up all of his summoner spells yet, and he can't play draft, and he doesn't have smite, and... He's not, he's not played for probably a month. Just when I arrived in Dublin, he was like, yeah, I'll play, I'll play. And then he never played with me once. And to be honest, I've given up. So I think I'm going to say strawberry seed is the smallest. I'm going to say an orange seed. <laughs> what? He's gone back straight away, Dom. I just what are you saying? It. I'm... I'm not going to vote yet. I'm not going seeds or, or, or fruits. I've said, me and Tom are playing League of Legends in a couple of hours. Are you in? He says, oh, shit, with an exclamation mark. And I've got three dots. I've got three dots, Tom. <laughs> Hold on. Now, we know he listens to the podcast. Sean? We, yeah, why not? I'll, shall I try Sean? Um, we know we know he listens to the podcast, and we know that he feels guilty the more we mention that he's not played with us. So maybe this is the kick up the ass he needs. I'll text Sean right now. Hang on. You do, Sean. Okay. Hang on. League of Legends. Legends. <laughs> this could be a huge one, Dom. Oh. What's he saying? He says, ah, A-G-H, exclamation mark. It's not, not good stuff. in anyone's A-G-H. book. Not good. He says, I can't today. And then I I won't tell you all the things that he's doing, but he says, he says, I'll spend the whole day running errands. Okay. And then he says, oh, wait, wait, Dom, you're not going to like this. Oh, God. He's, uh, Dom. Oh, God. Give me, give me a few weeks and I'm in. Weeks? (laughs) <laughs> he says weeks. What does he need weeks for? He's he's running errands. Wow, that's a, that's a big list, isn't it? Imagine how many errands takes weeks. Wow. He is Elijah Wood. He says, though. I've got he much might, to learn he, from you. He might, if it's weeks, it might take him that long to get those massive contact lenses out of his eyes because they're so big. It might be a week and a half on his right eye and a week and a half on his left. Then he cleans them. Then he puts them back in. Then he can play League of Legends with us. 
Could be that. Tom, I've got it. I've got to drop it down to. I mean, I think I was at a plum. I was at a plum, Tom. You were at a plum. I can't. You can't be at a plum now. Well, he's I've an orange seed for me. He's a raisin. A raisin for me. Well, let's move on because it's it's like someone's it's like someone's opened up a bag in the kitchen and let off a bad smell, and we're both trying to ignore it. Both of our friends are refusing to play League of Legends with us, and one of them said. I'll play with you in less than a month. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, we've had some questions. That does seem like, people. I mean, if you, if, you were, um, if you were trying to woo a young lady, if you were trying to woo a young lady and she said to you, I'm, I'm running some errands today, but, you know, maybe we could hang out in a couple of weeks. A you few would think weeks. That's probably it. A few weeks. Oh, emails and real mails. Fast as tigers, slow as snails. Anyway, it's moving on. We've had we've had some questions. Moving on, shall, I, shall I read the first question now and we'll see where this takes us? This question. Please, Tom. This question comes from Julie S. in Huntsville, Texas. And she says, Dom and Billy. Were you aware of the Lord of the Rings musical that started in 2008? My friend Jessica and I have been listening to the soundtrack and we actually quite enjoy it. If you were aware of it, what are your thoughts? This is a lot of questions here, by the way, from Julius. Would you ever consider playing in a musical where you have to sing and dance? I love your show more than warm bread and butter. So basically the questions are, did we know about the Lord of the Rings musical? What do we think? And have we ever wanted to be in a musical? Well, Dominic, this would have been a totally different answer from you five years ago. I know True. that for a fact. Dom was never a fan of musicals, and then something happened, and I'm not even sure what it was. It could have been Le Miserable, was it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you eating a gummy bear while mm-hmm. we're talking? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry about that. Absolutely I'm just delicious. Satiating myself, but go on. <laughs> um, myself, I've always been a fan of musicals. I love them. I like the more sort of modern ones, probably the best. You know, like um, Rent and and Hamilton now and things like that. But I like all musicals, and I like I like the old German, the sort of the Thrippany Opera, the Thrippany Opera, that kind Brechtian. of thing. You know, brilliant. Um, but yeah, I love all musicals. And I did hear about The Lord of the Rings and I never got to see it, which was a real shame because I think in my mind, I just thought it would run forever. I just thought, oh, well, that'll probably be a huge success. And um, I think they had a lot of problems. As I remember it, did they not have a very difficult stage set up that for the first few months wasn't working well? I, I, right. Was that was right? It a, was or am I thinking of I was. I think Spider Man did have its own problems on the West yeah, uh, on yeah. Broadway. On Broadway, yeah. when you when you say difficult stage system with the Lord of the Rings show, is it a series of cogs? It was all cogs that didn't quite fit, and then so you'd be in Lothlorien, and then the cogs would move, and it would be a hill in the Shire. This is it. What it was in my mind, I never saw it. I don't know. Yeah. But um, for whatever reason, it didn't last, which is a real shame, I think. But I've never heard the music, so I don't know if it's any good. And if a musical doesn't have great music, then that would be the major fall down. So hopefully the music's good and we, we, we see it again sometime. And, you know, Dom, Dom can be a, an Aragorn this time. He'll be yeah. wonderful. I think like a, a musical with bad music... It's not really a musical, really, is it? It's like it's like a it's like a hot water bottle with cold water in it. It just becomes a bottle. Then it's, it's not performing the function. So, like a musical with really bad songs, like that's what you went to go see and do. You know, is sing along and have fun with it. So, no, I'm not it. saying that it had bad songs. I don't know that it may have been what, brilliant, what, but I know why that did it, it fail. I know it didn't last. Uh, the cogs, I think. A series of cogs. cogs. Now, yeah. well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna answer that question. I like that you answered for me, Bills, and I would say it was eighty nine percent accurate. Um, 
I used to like musicals. That's how I got into acting, obviously, you know, Wizard of Oz and Grease and uh, Bugsy Malone and Oliver Twist and all that kind of stuff. Then I did go off it probably in my mid to late teens, all the way up until you and I becoming pals, all the way up until you telling me, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out on some really great musicals that have been made and Broadway's a great experience and there's some great things to see on the West End. And I was kind of like, ah, I don't know, not really for me type thing. That might have been my own insecurity because I just thought, well, I, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be doing musical theatre. So maybe I just kind of, you know, pushed it away a little bit. Um, and then I went to see Les Miserables in London on a rainy day when I was killing time. I was kind of, you know, finished my work for the day early, walked to the theatre to ask if they had any spare seats. They did. I saw it and thought, like, obviously, you, you were totally right. There's some great moments as, a, as an adult watching musical theatre. And then since then, I've watched a, a few more. In fact, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the new Dear Evan Hansen film that comes out. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but in terms of wanting to be in a musical, I don't have your beautiful kind of nightingale lark like voice. I just kind of grunt my songs through, whereas you actually have some finesse to your voice. So I can, I can't really see me being in a musical unless there's characters in musicals, you know, that sing like Van Morrison or David Gray. Now, William, you know that I am an absolute snob when it comes to fruit. I will only put the greatest quality of fruit in my mouth and then into my gullet because that's just the type of guy I am, you know. I, I like high-quality stuff. We all have uncompromising standards in other parts of our lives, so why skip out on quality where we spend a third of our lives? And that is in our bed sleeping. The husband and wife team that started Ball and Branch realized no sheets on the market met their standards for quality, so they created their own super soft and expertly crafted signature sheets. And I tell you, Tom, I've tried them and I've been sleeping in them for years and I love them. They're great sheets, Ball and Branch. And the more you wash them, the softer they get. Really great quality, and there's no middleman, so it just comes straight to you from Ball and Brand, so you get that luxury quality at a fair price. To experience an entirely new standard of comfort, visit ballandbranch.com. Get 15% off your first set of sheets with promo code ONION. That's B O L L and branch.com. Promo code ONION. Billy. There is so much going on in the world right now, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like new songs on Spotify or new podcasts to listen to, maybe an episode of The Friendship Onion, perhaps, or stuff uh -huh. that you'd rather not think about. Maybe you're trying to tune out some of the hassles of the day. Maybe you're trying to concentrate on things in your life. Maybe you've got some studying to do. Well, listen, you can't always control the vibes out there you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. And I tell you what, I wear a lot of headphones. I wear them for a long time because I'm on flights and they are extremely comfy. Those Raycon earbuds are amazing, Dom. There's all sorts of ways you can listen to them. They're pure mode, balanced mode, bass mode. So you can get it the way that you want to hear it. And they are super Super comfortable. There's also a built-in mic, and you can take calls on your earbuds at just the press of a button. So right now, Friendship Onion listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash onion. That's buyraycon.com slash onion to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash onion. But I think that's good, you know, and then you know, like the, like I say, the sort of Brechtian or that, you could, one of them would be brilliant. Yeah. Um, do you want to read this next? 
You want to read this next question, yeah. girls? Or do you want me to? You ready, from, Tom? From Kerry M in Philly. Philadelphia. Philadelphia, buddy. But a cheese North coast. coast. Yeah, I know. Is it? Oh. Not... Right, we hear this. My brother is part of a group of guys in Philly who have basement pubs. I like this already, Dom. Mm, yeah, good stuff. We are working on this, or, or we are working on his, but we want it to be Lord of the Rings themed. So fantastic idea. The yeah. name is going to be the Green Dragon. Well, it's a, it's a classic. Right. We even have a sign for the entrance. Do you have any ideas of what we need to include to give it that Green Dragon feel? We'd love your advice, and we'd love to have something there to pay homage to you both. Homage? You drunks! Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's, a line <laughs> from, that's a line from The Life of Brian, uh, Monty Python. I thought that. Um, well, right off the top of my head, I've not seen this question yet, but right off the top of my head, you know how sometimes cheeky businesses will super glue a coin onto the floor or onto a countertop so that people go to grab it and then they can laugh and kind of go, ha ha, that's great. I was just thinking, if you want the Green Dragon to have a nice Shire-like hobbity vibe, but also maybe keep you in kind of a hobbity good humor and being silly and having fun with your friends, I wonder if maybe a few hobbit-shaped pipes that they smoke, super glued onto the bar top, in a way that might make people reach out and think, oh, someone's left a pipe here. But actually, the pipe has been super glued to the countertop. I like that idea. I, I like that idea. When somebody's a had a couple piece. of eels hmm. and they go to grab it. Yeah, very good, Tom. And so this yeah. is in Philadelphia, and they're, they've got basement pubs. Now, are they allowed to sell drink in there, or is that just for the friends? Is there... Is there uh, do you think that once you go underground level, alcohol becomes a different legality. Is that right? Yeah. I'd, if you go below, I think it's either 15 or 18 feet, mm. it's basically there is no laws. Right. You can do what you want under there. Right. Always remember okay. that, Dom. May I suggest for this pub, this Green Dragon pub, if you're going to sell coffee or tea, you might want the Friendship Onion mug. <clears throat> oh, I see what you did there. See you there, Tom. So that if anyone was going for a coffee, say, for instance, they say, oh, I don't want to drink today. I don't want any beer. I don't want any mead. I don't want any whiskey. Have a coffee or a tea from a Friendship Onion mug. And you can get that at friendshiponionpodcast.com. Can I ask a question about the mug? Uh, hold on. Uh, yes, you're in the front with your hand up. Yes. Actually, this, this is a two-part question. First part is, is there anything liquid Could I have the second mug? part first? Oh, okay. The second part first, which will be in some Thank way asked by the first part. Second part is, what's the color of the interior of that mug? And the first part was, is there anything liquid in there? Can you show us? Right. Well, there is no liquid. I was going to have a cup of tea later, so I had right. that there. And the inside of it, Dom, is black, black, like, it's like your heart. It's as black, 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 oh, black, black. Oh, that is black. It's like a galaxy. It's like a small galaxy inside there. You can stare into that when you meditate, and that will help you find whatever it is you're looking for. Lovely. That's another thing I, you can do with that it, mug. It looks like a – do it again. Hang on. It looks like a colonoscopy. Brilliant. Yeah, if you just have a look around the corner there, you see – I was just talking about. I was just talking about a colonoscopy today. Have you got That's one weird scheduled? That you mentioned that. Nah, but I thought I think I should probably get one. Well, can I can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Next time you book one, book me in as well. We'll get them done together. Do you want to do one? We'll get them. Let's do it in tandem. I'll tell you how I got to colonoscopy, Dom, this mm. morning, because it all started in the barbers. I went to get a haircut. Yeah. And I got it down I got it down quite short there at the sides, Dom. Yeah. And I found I a little that, growth man. here. Right. I found a little thing. Yeah. And I thought, I'm gonna go and get that seen to because you shouldn't be you know, you don't get growth and things. 
It shouldn't have I been. went, but anyway, Dom, you can relax. Everything's fine. He said, oh, it's absolutely nothing. You don't need to worry about that. He said, we can just leave it. He said, or we can uh, get rid of it. He said, well, I'll just leave it. I was like, it's a now, thing there. I said, no, what, get rid of it. Is it what, how would you describe the shape? I would say it's like half a raisin stuck to the side of my head there. Now, and uh, I said, no, I don't want, I don't want to leave that. I'm keeping my. I said, I'm going to keep my hair quite short at its sides now. So I'd rather. So they said, well, we can get rid of it. I said, we'll do that, and they get a, they get liquid nitrogen done. Right, right. And and they spray it on it. Until it, until it gets painful, and then they stop. And right. you go, Oof. and then they go, hold on, we'll do that again. And then they spray it again, Tom, a bit, for about the same time. Yeah. And they said, give that about a week. That'll scab over, <laughs> fall off. Don't worry about it. Have you got a plaster on it right now? Nothing, Tom, nothing. Let's have a look. It's Come on, let's have a look. Hang on. Oh, yeah, it looks like you banged your head. Okay. Yeah, I banged it on liquid nitrogen. And do, do you think you... Uh, so that got me thinking, I'll just get other things checked. Uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. if you want a colonoscopy, I'll, 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 book that. I'll book that for both of us. Book us in in tandem. Uh, do you not think it's interesting that earlier on you described... Your anguish at Elijah not joining us for a game of League of Legends for at least three weeks as the size of a raisin, and you are now carrying a raisin-shaped scar next to your brain. So I will always have a little piece of Elijah just at my temple. We will. We that will. that we probably will. means something, that. Yeah, Shall I ask will. another question? Yeah. I mean, why not? Is is okay, there any more? Go on. Yeah, we've got we've got a ton more actually. So we'll try and get through as many as we can. Here's a question from G I'm gonna I'm gonna try as hard as I can with this name and then maybe you give a go as well. Jessica Jezuski. Jezuski. I would say that was perfect, Dom. I, I couldn't really? improve on that. So well done. Ten out of ten. Okay, Jessica. Location it says. Yeah. Uh, now, here's Jessica's question. Hello, friends. I have a question that I have used as a gauge for all new people I've met for a while now. You can tell a lot about a person based on their answer. My question is thus. If you oh. were a kitchen oh, hold utens... On. Oh, go on. I was going to say I'll answer as quickly as I can because I've not read it, and then, you know, that will be an honest answer. There we go, then. If you were a kitchen utensil, what kitchen utensil would you be and why? Uh, uh, fish slice. Is that called a fish slice? The thing, the scooper thing oh, like that you would flip things over. A spatula thing. Because I yeah. use that probably 800 times more than anything else in the kitchen. So I'd like to be useful. So I'd be the, the spatula fish slice thing. Lovely that. Um, what about you? My initial answer, my instinctual answer to that would be a straight-edged wooden spoon because Ooh. I like to get in the corners. Do you know what I mean? I like to get in there. Get you right I mean? in and get it all worked out. Oh. Ask all the questions. Like with a colonoscopy. Did they scream? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, Jessica, great. Um, yeah, good question. Thank you. I don't know what that tells us about ourselves, but if you'd like to write in and, and let us know, Jessica, what that actually tells us, we will read it out probably next week. Probably. Well, you, you go ahead with this question. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting hot in here. I'm going to take my hoodie off. Right, okay. So nice hoodie. Is it comfortable at all, Tom? It's very comfy. Hey, John, what's that you're wearing there in that beautiful yellow? Oh, it's interesting that you ask, Bills. It's a friendship on that your T-shirt. Actually... Yeah. That is a good T-shirt. I like that. There you are. The very onion. The very onion there. Nice, that. I tell you what, comfy. Oh, breathable. Forget about it. Breathable. I can, I've never breathed this much in my life. 
I tell you what, that is beautiful, Don. That really suits you, that T-shirt. <sighs> Thanks, Bill. <clears throat> yeah, you should wear that around town. You look fantastic. I'll be wearing it for the rest of the night, I'll tell you what. Available at friendshiponionpodcast.com. Anyway, go on, Bills, I digress. Not the... Not the... Are we doing another question or are we going to the riddle? Oh, a riddle. Yeah, let's go to a riddle. I you, love riddles, you, Don. You take us to the riddle. Go on, then. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Right. And the riddle for this week comes from Kristen. That's all I know about her. Her name Hello, is Kristen. Kristen. That's Hello. as much information as John is willing to give us at this point in the show. Mm -hmm. these, these are our and riddle voices. Our riddle voices are very beautiful voices. and in your ear. Right, oh, Tom, are you ready? Go on. Now, you've been very good. You've been very good at the riddles lately. Quite right, good, here yeah. we go. Dom, yeah. I don't exist, but I do. I'm a future friend who eludes you. You think you can catch me, but I'm always fading. Yet I'm still there in the distance waiting. And then it says thanks at the bottom. But I don't think that's part of the riddle. I think that's maybe just John saying thanks. Yeah. Or it could I've be not read this before, but right, someone... right off the top of my head, I think I know it. Dom, you are, I'm not even going to think about it and just let you have your guess. And if you blow my mind right here, I'll yeah. give you a T-shirt, a sweater, a hat, <laughs> and a chance to be on the Friendship Onion. Well, this is just my instinctual knee-jerk answer after you saying it and me hearing it. But is it a shadow? John, get ready. I think it's Go. a shadow. I'm ready. This is a this is a tricky one. It's a Go tricky down. one. Go down. Well, that's my answer. Shadow. A shadow. Yeah. That's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer. Oh, it's not right. Look, yeah, I don't exist, but I do. I'm a future friend who right? eludes you. And I thought, you think you can catch me. You're always trying to catch a shadow, but I'm always fading like a shadow. Yeah, I'm still there in the distance like a shadow waiting. Oh, gosh. All right. Is it, is it, I've got it. Is Come it on. tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow, John? Is it tomorrow? You are correct, sir. Is that it? Is it correct? Is that it? That was, that was fast. That was good. I tell you what, Tom, I got that one. That was amazing. The only Bill. thing with the shadow is a shadow does exist. I guess a shadow yeah. does exist. It's a good point. Read it now, knowing what we know now, Bills. Let's Tarantino it. Read it again. Right. Let's see if it. Will okay. Blow up, man. And what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, so that we get yeah. it into our mind, when I finish a line, if you could very quietly say "tomorrow," so that we we understand yeah, yeah. that that's what yeah. it is. <clears throat> My riddle voice. I don't exist. I don't exist. Tomorrow. Is that not your line now? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But I... <laughs> Mate, right. No, you're right. It's every second line. I yeah, don't yeah. exist, but I do. Tomorrow. I'm a future friend who eludes you. Tomorrow. You think you can catch me, but I'm always fading. Tomorrow. Yes, I'm still there. I'm in the distance, waiting. Tomorrow? And then there's like, thanks, thanks. Well, thanks I, tomorrow. I, I got that one, Tom. I got that Brilliant. one. And I think, I'll, I'll tell you what that was. It was teamwork because yeah. you said shadow and that yeah. made me think in a sort of abstract way. And yeah. then when it went, I'm a future friend, for some reason, that just gave me tomorrow. But I'd right. like it to be put in writing that it, it was me that got that one. It was you, and if anyone out there knows where we sit in terms of solving riddles, because I know when we had Michael Rosenbaum on, he solved quite a few for us. But I, I think we're, I think you and I are kind of even in the in the riddle solving stakes. I think. Do you want some YouTube comments? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's hear what people are saying about the show. Sure. Because here's the exciting thing about YouTube, Dom, and I know that you know that I'm I'm slightly obsessed about getting the plaque. And you get a plaque uh, when you get 100,000 uh, subscriptions. We, at the moment, have almost 98,000 subscriptions. They're so close. So 2,000 
in a world of how many people are in the world, Dom? I think is it is. It, do they say about ten billion at this point? Well, that's a lot of people. We that's just need 2,000 people to subscribe. So get your friends, get subscriptions, and then we can get the plaque. We're building at no expense or huge expense, maybe, an amazing set for me and Dom for the Friendship yeah. Onion. And we'd yeah. like to put that plaque up there um, on, on the new set. Yeah, so uh, please studio. subscribe to YouTube. We're currently not in the studio right now because obviously I'm away. Um, but by the time I get back, hopefully in the next kind of month or two here, we'll be, we might be moving into our new studio. And wouldn't that be lovely to have a plaque commemorating? We could maybe get a little mini curtain for it as well and we could open it. You know that thing where you see every the Every plaque. week. And maybe it could have a little theme tune. Brilliant. Right? Yes. I'm the plaque, I'm the plaque I sit there behind your back Can you see me? I'm the plaque A hundred thousand guys Followers <laughs> Some of that um, Alright, back to hey, YouTube Tom. Go on Molly, Molly Brainard says yeah. I've just moved across the country And I'm all alone In an unfamiliar place I've been feeling a bit homesick But, lads Watching the Friendship Onion makes me feel so much better. Thank you for making such a brilliant and enjoyable show. Come on, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Thanks, Molly. That's oh, very sweet. That's nice, um, isn't it? It's nice to hear good that, things like that. It is nice. It is nice to hear good things. Although I admit, I think we talked about this a while ago, that both of us coming from Britain, we always feel a little bit uh, self-conscious about uh, people being complimentary towards us, right? And this is just the section of the show where people say nice things about us, which is a bit weird. But anyway. Um, well, maybe, um, yeah. I was going to say maybe we could read out some of the bad things as well, but I don't think I want to do that. That just made me feel sad. Um, here's an, why don't you read this Apple <laughs> review, Billy, because I know that you're a big fan of farting. This includes farting. Oh, there, yeah. Well, this is um, from Shin. Shin. With lots of ends. If I had to say how many, I'd say 10 between them. Shin, yeah. Shin Good says, I broke wind in my chair just like Billy. When Did I break wind on my chair, Dom? I don't remember. I mean, you I have must broken have done. wind on a chair, but not on the podcast. <laughs> on the podcast, I think Broke so. wind in my chair just like Billy. In excitement once I discovered that this podcast existed. They should have been doing this years ago. By far the most entertaining and hilarious podcast out there. You're, you're right. It's hard to read nice things about yourself, isn't it? I find it yeah. easier if people, if people um, link us in the Instagram, then we can put that on our Instagram pages. And uh, I, I think I like doing that better, I think. I like that too. But I, I do think that's a great compliment when someone said, I was so excited to hear from you that it made me f lose control of my bowels and fart. It's great. Billy and Dom eat the world. <sighs> right, what are we up to now, Dom? Well, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a hornet's nest that we're going to open up here because we usually eat the world and we could talk about... Which is one of our favourite things. It is. Now, not only that, but this week... Since I'm in another country, I suggested something that we should eat, and I forgot to to get it. That is, I mean, it's an amateur mistake, though. It's an amateur mistake. I knew, you know that thing where what you, do you think, you, you know that thing where you have something on the back of your mind that you can't quite work out. I knew that there was something, but I had a bunch of different lists that I was trying to take care of today, and I forgot to eat the world. It, I mean. Well, she'll, I'm actually quite hungry, so shall I eat the world quickly and then you can, like, you know, say what Be you want to say about that? Give me a second to go and get my Jaffa cakes. Okay. You've, you've slightly let the cat out of the bag, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> slightly. <laughs> All right. 
Lovely stuff. Before you eat the world, and I get jealous and just get sad watching eat the world, I'm going to give you a, a very brief League of Legends update from Sean Astin. Yes. Very, very similar to Elijah's, to be honest. Just two separate texts. The first one right. says, Fuck. Just F and a series of U's. No, nothing else. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Same as Elijah. What did Elijah do? He went, Ugh. A G H exclamation mark. Ah. Like a pirate. Like a pirate. <laughs> And then, yeah. and then Sean Astin then wrote, just after that, 90 seconds later, I can't get there now. How sad. I can't get there. I can't get there now. Oh, God. Oh, no. does, does Sean think we actually go to the rift? Does, I think so. Can you see I that? I can't. Yeah. It's quite... That qu feels quite definite as well, doesn't it? Is that, yeah. I can't get there emotionally. To like play games maybe. with you guys, is it? Maybe. Maybe. I wonder where yeah. there is. And you know how sometimes parents or people in authority uh, positions will say now as a way of saying this thing is finished. You know what I mean? They'll put a line under it. They'll go, now, now. I wonder if he's saying that. I can't get that now. Just think, forget, get forget it. it. Forget it. All right. Well, you're, this is unique. And Elijah you're says. In the world and I'm not. Oh, come. Elijah said, in a couple of weeks. All right. Well, Billy, tell us what's going on. This is a classic cake stroke biscuit called the Jaffa Cake. Now, when we told John about this, he didn't really know about Jaffa Cakes. So he suggested this, which is a different for you just listening, is it looks like a Jaffa Cake, but it's made by someone else, and it's called a Choco Jaffa. So I've actually got both of them here, Dom, right. just to see. But I have got the real Jaffa cake. And if you don't mind, I'm quite hungry, so I'm just going to whiff it down. Dive right in, and then we'll get, then we'll get into it. <clears throat> While Billy's eating his Jaffa cake, I'll just talk about it very briefly. At one point, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was under the impression that it was made in Ireland, and I was like, that can't be right because it's a Mc a McVitie's thing, which um, generally is in England. But it says at the top here, the exact identity of the world-famous Edinburgh invention, the Jaffa Cake, uh, has long caused debate between those who believe it's a cake and those who reckon it's not a cake. Now, I don't think it's a cake. You and I have our own opinions about this, right? It's a, it's a money thing. Oh, you've separated it, lovely. And you're saying it's not a cake? No, I think it's a biscuit masquerading as well, a I cake. Think, I think you'll find, Dom, that the British courts would disagree with you because it went right. to court in 1991, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And they won the battle to say that it was a cake and therefore they didn't have to pay tax on it. Now, what... <clears throat> What defines it as a cake as opposed to a biscuit? Because it's biscuit-sized and it's kind of a biscuit vibe, right? It's kind of shaped and behaves like a biscuit, not a cake. So here's their argument, Dom, and it's a good one. When a cake gets old, it gets hard. When a biscuit gets old, it gets soft. Have you had a Jaffa cake long enough that it's got hard on you? Look, I've done what I do. I used to do as a kid. I've eaten everything except for the orange centre. Look at that, Dom. Uh, it looks like a doubloon. Yeah, I'll tell you what that is. That is a mouthful of deliciousness, that. <clears throat> is it sticky? Is it sticky? Sticky? It's sticky, but yet slidey. It could slip off at any point and did. Yeah, don't drop and it on your, on your keyboard. No, I won't. It's just there yeah, like that. Look at that, Dom. You can Normally, Bill. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. It's almost, it, I would say, it's slightly bigger than your nose. It's a gun. Oh, oh orangey goodness, Jaffrey. Oh, 
that's good. I if like you that. could look through the notes, I think it does tell us what the orange bit is made from. <clears throat> Let's have I a look. Excuse it's... me. What I was going to say was, usually when we're eating the world, we, we chat a lot before we eat it. You dived mm. right in. You just, you've eaten one already. <laughs> it's all gone. I've, eat, I've eaten two, Dom. And I tell you what, they're absolutely this, they're, they're delicious. They're one of my favourite biscuit stroke cakes. Cakes. Is it, well, it's a cake, you said, but I think it's a biscuit. Here's, here's one of those comments that John leaves out there that is a bit of a right. non-second, so it doesn't really make a massive amount of sense. But we'll read it out anyway just to show everyone at home what we have to do with, mm. with, with John. He's written. My God. He's written. On their website, they wrote... Uh, and then, quote, it, it contained a simple combination of sugar and wh- it, it, what, what is it, the cake? And not, and it doesn't contain, it contained. Contained, it used to have it, doesn't anymore. It contained a simple combination of sugar and tangerine oil to form the sealed layer of jam. What did the mystery <laughs> The Jaffa cake. I think they're talking it's about that the gooey, jam it's that gooey stuff that he just held. The, but right. that stuff, that is the good. That is the stuff, Dom. <laughs> you know, yeah. somehow things just go together. Well, I feel like the sponge, the chocolate, and the jelly thing that you just mentioned that that contained, don't know what it contains now, sugar oh. and tangerine oil. That, it just all goes together so well. If you don't mind, I'm going to try the other one, the fake one that uh, John found on the internet. Yeah, fine. Try, try, the, try the charlatan and let us know. Any, dip, any big difference? I'll tell you what it's like, Dom. I'll tell you what it's like. I, I, exactly. And because of this sh- job that you're doing, do, I mean, how far in the future are you in this job? Maybe you're not allowed to say, but do, no, you, had, okay. do you have food processors? We're not, about not half, a cent- half a century into the future. But go not on. Like, not a magic mix, but you know those food things where you say to the computer, oh, I'll have a Jaffa cake, and it makes one. Spits it out. You don't have one of those in your show, do you? No, we, we, we don't have one of those, but I could ask. Should I ask? Should I make a demand for one? No, you don't need to, but okay. I'm going to let you know that, see these fake Jaffa cakes? Yeah. I feel as if if the real Jaffa cake is made by the hands of an artist, then that is made by a computer. It tried oh. to make that, but it made that. And that like. is much better than that. Yeah. So that's like... All the bits great. are there in that, Yeah. but it doesn't taste like that. And when you say that, you mean the original for anyone who's uh, just listening. It, would it be fair to say that the original was painted by Van Gogh, but the pretender was painted by Picasso. Painted by what? It just it cut out just at the last oh, bit there. The pretender was painted by Picasso. You know, just kind of all thrown together in like a random way, not really making No. Look, go on. It would be like if the original was Van Gogh, then that was painted um, by by a monkey. Okay, it's not yeah. all all the bits aren't quite right, you know. Oh, that's a shame. All right, well, but let's see the original Dom. Oh well, my god, the original. Well, treat yourself to another one while I'm talking. I'll I'll give another one of these fantastic uh, pieces of information mm. here pulled out of the internet. Despite a challenge mm. by Her Majesty's Customs to excise. That a Jaffa cake is indeed a biscuit and therefore subject to VAT, value added tax. McVitie's successfully proved to the courts that a Jaffa cake is indeed a cake and it is still VAT free to this day. Kind of similar to what you just said, but just worded slightly differently. But and, and delivered magically, and I think that's brilliant. Dom, they sell over one billion every year. If you laid them end to end, you'd create a bridge of Jaffas from London to Sydney and back again. That's incredible. 
And then this final uh, fact about Jaffa Cakes, before you give it a score, mm. here's a few great stats for you. Each cake takes 18 minutes from start to finish to make. That's quite a lot of labour time. 18 minutes. It took less than 18 seconds to eat. Carry on, Tom. It's made, made in a factory that covers 10 acres on a conveyor belt that is over a mile long. The oven itself is 100 yards long. And the whole what process... An oven. Incredible. And this whole process takes... <clears throat> yields 2,000 Jaffa cakes a minute. Now, scores, Dom. I'll go fast because you don't have scores. So, Or can you do scores from, from your memory for Jaffa cakes? I'll do not? memory scores after yours, for sure. Right. <clears throat> right, there's memory scores after yours, for sure. For sure. Mine. Taste. Nine. Me? Next. Taste. Well, there's only the two of us here. Good point. I thought you were going to go through the whole scores and then I was going to go through the whole scores. But I think you're right. I think you're right. Me? Memory scores? Taste? 8.6. 8.6 and a 9. Aesthetics. Now, this isn't the packet I remember, Dom. No, it's changed. It doesn't, it doesn't come like that. It used to come in a way that they'd all sort of sit in against each other like that, right? And a li nice little sort of line like that. I like that. I don't like this as much. So if, if, if Jaffa's now come like this, and this isn't just because I bought it in a British store in, in America, if they actually come like this, they've spoiled the aesthetics. Agreed. So I can only give it a three. I'm covered in Jaffa cakes, Tom. Oh, gosh. Yeah, my recollection from memory was a kind of bluish box, rectangular yeah. box, quite classic. Yeah, dark. Not orange. Hard cardboard. No, I, yeah. don't, I don't like this. I'm going to give it a 2.7 for aesthetics, although the biscuit itself, if, could you hold that up? Because it doesn't seem to have changed too much. The biscuit itself is iconic. It's like a small, thin, uh, unidentified flying object, miniature size. Yeah, lovely. So I think the oh, in one. I think the aesthetic of the biscuit is probably closer to a four. That's a good. No, you're right, John, because the aesthetic of the biscuit with that little ridge mm -hmm. for the orange is absolute. I mean, that is class. It's world class. It's a, it's an iconic shape. Now usefulness. I like it with a cup of tea. I don't know about you, but I like a little cup of tea dunking thing. You just dug it in there. Lovely. What could yeah. be nicer, Dom? Can you think of anything that you could do with the uh, Jaffa flat? Could you throw, you know those toys back in the day that you used to throw at a window and then they'd kind of stick on the way down? Could you use it as one of them? Like a sticky mini frisbee? Well, I mean, maybe. Like, could you use it in, like at the seaside to see if it does that t -t 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 bounce oh, skimming, thing? skimming, skimming. Maybe. I'm what sure if, you could do things like make a cake. If you if you didn't have all the stuff to make a cake, I'm sure if you were a good chef, you could like cut the orange piece off and make that the top, and use the biscuit as the base. I'm yeah. sure you could you could do something. Well, can I can I ask you this? What would you call hmm. a Jaffa cake cake? A Jaffa cake cake? Oh wow. Yeah, that that's would be link. like. Does that? Yeah, it's like a postmodern cake. Yeah, it's a cake that knows it's a cake, and it's now commenting on itself would, because it do doesn't think, pay VAT. Do you think some Michelin-starred restaurants would call it a deconstructed Jaffa cake? And then would you have to pay VAT on it because it's then, you know, two 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 negatives make a positive, as you'll remember from from high school math. Good point. And if anyone has any thoughts on that, they just write into the Friendship Onion, castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. Uh, but usefulness. Yeah. What about what if you had a lesion, uh, like a like mm -hmm. a an open wound, something like that, a burn oh. from the oven or something like that? Do we think there's any value in the in the Jaffa cake diskette just sticking over and forming a a, a seal from the air? Like it's. 
a second skin, if you would, but an orange skin. Orange shade, uh, I mean, uh, orange scented. I don't see why you wouldn't, Tom. If you had nothing else in the house, didn't have any super glue, then I okay. think the orange from a Jaffa cake would be quite useful for that. Um, so I'll after that nice discussion, thing. I'm going to have to give it up there as um, 8.75. Eight point seven, useful usefulness. Eight. I'm going to say eight. I'm going to give it a solid eight score because I would like to try the next time I I, I cut my elbow on my knee, attaching the small mm -hmm. sticky Jaffa diskette to it, and then I'll report back and let you know how I did. Well, yeah, yeah. Let us know, Tom. Let us know. Mm -hmm. I've almost done a whole box here while oh, we've been discussing. Right. I'm an abs I'm an absolute pig when it comes to Jaffa cakes, Tom. An I, absolute I would pig. say, I would say, just enjoy it. Obviously, if there's anyone out there who has grown up with or become accustomed to a local delicacy or dish or drink or thing that Billy and I can enjoy on the show and is easy to get hold of in, you know, via via an easy to navigate online way, let us know at. The friendship onion at castmedia.com, or you can leave us a message at speak pipe forward slash the friendship onion. I think that's it. That was very good, Tom. That was very Thanks. good. And uh, yeah, you. it's always nice. We love to hear from everyone, so please do that. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube because we need to get our plaque uh, for 100,000, which hopefully will happen this week. And uh, I don't know if we mentioned we've got merch. Did we mention that, Dom? I think we mentioned it in passing, that there there is some merchandise available. Just have a think about it. Should we, should we finish off? Should we end the show with a bang to by working out if something is funky or not? Come on, Dom, I love it. Give us a, give us a funk. Who's this from, Dom? Who's we'll, it we'll from? Sque we'll squeeze it in. This is from Luke Bischoff. And mm -hmm. he has he has offered the song for us, "Purple Disco Machine" by Playbox, which even Oof. sounds funky. It certainly sounds funky, Dom. Give us that, give us that in our ear holes, would you, John? <laughs> It's a oh, good tune. Reverb. Thanks for that, John, for letting us hear that. And obviously, thanks, Luke Bischoff, for uh, sending that through for us to listen to. <clears throat> what did you think, Tom? I thought funky. I thought definitely funky. I'm going to say that was um, that was the Pointer Sisters funky. Right. Nice. Thank I liked you. it as well. I had... I mean, judging by this, the actual name, Purple Disco Machine, it had a little disco thing going on, didn't it, Dom? Sure did. And I enjoy, I, I'm going to say Tom Tom Club, funky. Oh, lovely, lovely. I like the Tom Tom Club. Great. Well, I think that's a wonderful way to finish the show. Of course, if you guys have any suggestions for us, for songs that you've grown up with or that you've just got to know that you think are really, really funky, let us know because Billy and I love um, continuing to grow our own playlists and hopefully you guys' playlist too. Yeah, we love it when people introduce us to things that we haven't he seen or heard or read. So please send uh, ideas for us. We love that. And Dom, it's lovely to see you. I know that you have to go and work and you have to go and travel the globe, but it's nice when you're here. But it's lovely to see you on my computer screen. And uh, I'll see you when you're back very soon for one of your breaks and then head back over. And anyway, it's lovely to see you, Tom. William, it's always a pleasure to see you too. I'm sorry that this happened to be the first ever singular Billion Dom Eat the World episode, but I think you absolutely nailed it on your own. It was absolutely delicious. I'm going to eat some more. Why don't we go on League of Legends? while we're both together before you go to your bed. Let's do it. All right. Hey, we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe to the Friendship Onion. Cheers. Bye.